Yeah, here we are. It's Friday again, and uh, I've been at it all week doing mostly body work stuff or fixing stuff in the body. Gas tank. I got the gas tank out. It had a hole in it on the other side, or maybe on this side, maybe on this side right about there somewhere. Yeah, you can't really tell. But I fixed that hole. I finished up work on the uh, rear end, but I think that was last week. And then now... Now that I had the gas tank out, yeah, you can see where I attached it right there. When I had the gas tank out, then I uh, got up underneath here and was able to see into into the above the uh, above the, behind the wheel well and above the frame. There was this metal work, and this side here is completely rotted out. The other side is okay. So I've spent most of the week fixing up in here, and mostly it's done. I imagine next week I'll finish that off, and then I'll move along getting metal work done on the rest of it. So, some progress. There you can see some of it in there in the trunk, and uh, a glaring hole there. Oh my God, there's a hole in the car. There's lots of those. And so, hope you stick around, see what I did. You might enjoy it. There's some live action. Got a couple of new tools, or not tools. I got a new workbench, and I got uh, a new bender thing. You, I wait for Prince's Auto to have sales, and you can get some of this stuff at a pretty good price at Prince's Auto when they're on sale there. So keep your eye on their flyers, and you might get a good deal. So there you go. That's all for this week. Stick around and... Uh, Hope you enjoy it, and I'll see you next week. Yeah, so here we go again. Like that uh, rear end is sitting there. Rumor has it Sam is coming out here today, so I'm going to get him to help me lift that down. But today, I'll get working on getting this tank out of here. Like there's a nut bolt holding it there. Another one holding it there. Four of them all together. I'll see if I can... Put some, I'll put some magic elixir on them first, and then I'll see if I can get them off of there. Yeah, now there's the, uh, that bolt comes through and holds the gas tank strap on. Same on this side here. Comes through and holds the gas tank strap on. And they're just completely seized on the other side. I tried them with a half inch, um, what do you call that thing? A half inch uh, impact wrench. And it was twisting back and forth, and I'm going to, that will wreck the straps. And the straps are in fairly decent shape. So, I'm cutting these nuts off the top of them here, and I'll rebuild this stuff later. And see if I can get the uh, other bolts off it. I've done the front ones already, and got to cut these two here. And then that should make it so the straps fall out. Then I should loosen that thing up in there, and maybe the whole thing will fall out. We'll see what happens. Yeah, the tank is kind of falling out of it now. It's being held by the spout still on this side. I'll have to figure that out. But here's the straps. They just fell off. So what's going on with them? See, there was a, a nut on this. A bolt goes through, and a nut holds it on this side tight. And then it, then the strap goes on and screws onto it. So I can re I'll replicate that again on the in the car so that it gets done right the same same thing but this thing here was seized on solid and wouldn't move or maybe what was happening is that it would move enough in here that it would uh, not allow the impact wrench to really get at it so i'll put it in the vise and put the impact wrench on it and see what happens yeah so i got everything unhooked down below and then at the top here, I don't know, can you see down there that spout? Yeah, maybe. Anyway, there's three screws. One, two, three, that hold it through this. And those three screws, two of them came out easy. One of them I had to use an impact driver on, which worked all right. And got it out without stripping it badly. Now, that dropped, the gas tank dropped, but it's still being held by this thing here, which is hooked onto the gas cap. So I'll just have to see what the hell goes on there. Maybe I'll just unhook a link on that thing. That'd be the easiest thing to do instead of trying to undo all that. 
Yeah, there you go. Way I was talking to nothing. So I unhooked this link here and just took the chain apart. Then I put a like a donut on here. Hmm. Dropped it in when I was filming when I thought I was filming before. Anyhow, I put a donut on here to keep it from going down into the into the fuel tank. And that'll make it so it's a retrievable. I think it'll come off the other end anyhow. I'll check it out when I get down there. So I'll do, lift it up and see if I can get the mo get the uh, three screws hold it. And then there's this little plastic that's a decoration, right? So three screws, and I'll lift it up and see if the tank will come out now. I did put a strap across underneath there. I don't know if I showed you that just to keep it so in case this happened the tank wouldn't drop on my head or something anyhow there you go yeah so here i am i'm getting ready to suck the fuel out of that tank over there right so i've got this thing down and i'm trying it out seeing what happens i'm getting my bucket ready and my phone fell right out of my pocket into that bucket full of corruption there so i got it cleaned off so it seems to be okay thank god it wasn't water Oh yeah, there we are. Talking to nothing again. So anyhow, there, I got the fuel mostly dumped out of it. The spout comes off. It's just, uh, there's a rubber housing around it at both ends. And then that center pipe that goes down the spout. So you can only fit regular fuel into it or gasoline, not diesel. Anyhow, the, uh, and you can't get into it to siphon it. Now I'll try and get that mechanism that that where the uh, oh the fuel gauge and everything goes in there, and that's where the fuel comes out of it when you want to when you have it working right. I'll see if I can get that opened up, and if I can, that'll be a good start. The fuel that drained out of it was a nice bright red, which uh, means it was kind of a rusty inside the tank it must be rusty so i'll have to steam out the tank and see if i can get that cleaned up somehow too yeah so then i took my screwdriver and just gently scraped away all the junk around here look there's a bunch of spots where i'll have to clean it up and just do some tinning on it like here and here and here and there and everywhere then the, uh, this part here, which is, it holds it the same as a bung on a 45-gallon uh, drum holds things down. So I took the cold chisel and the hammer and I just gently tapped on that thing there. And don't you know, it unscrewed. And it unscrews down to, like, it's got these little bumps on it that go in coordination with these things here. So that's that part out. Let's see about the next part. I'm not sure what's going to happen now. But there should be a rubber seal in there of some sort. Huh. That just came out. Just like that. Well, what do you know, eh? There it is. Now, that might be serviceable. I'll just take it apart and clean it up a bit and see if it's usable or not. I'm pretty sure I can get a new one of them. Cool. Then it's got this rubber seal right here. Which I'm pretty sure I'll need a new one of those. Pointing the wrong way. That comes out. Now I'll see if I can pour the rest of the fuel out of there without making a big, big mess. Hmm. Like I did last time. I'm pretty good at making messes, that's for sure. Anyhow, here we go. Then I'll take it and uh, get a bunch of water in there, swish around a bunch of water and see if I can get the yuck out of it, and then I'll steam it, and then I'll do more of that. And then I'll start welding on it, or actually just soldering on it to clean up, to make it so it's a, like you can see where it's rusted through. 
Well, it's not rusted right through, but I'll clean that up and I'll tin that so that it's got solder on it. And then I'll clean this stuff up and tin it so it's got solder on it. Anywhere where I see it might be weak, I'll fix. So now let me see if I can get the fuel out of it. Sure smells bad. Let me see if I can turn off my camera. Yeah, there, that's not really the color of fuel that you want to be running in your car, is it? Anyway, must have been some water in there and it's rusted away, so I'll see what I can do about cleaning that all up and making it so that it doesn't do that anymore. Yeah, there's all the muck that came out of it just without even, not even steaming it yet. So what I'll do is I'll rinse it out with some water and then I'll steam it a bunch and then, uh, then we'll see where we go from there. Yeah, yeah, it looks like uh, somebody's getting ready for winter around here. That'll be enough snow removal equipment for this parking lot, I'm sure. Yeah, so here I am. I was, uh, got started for about a minute, then the power went out. And so I left the thing. I had got to the point where I'd filled it up with, well, I didn't fill it up. I threw a gallon of this stuff into the tank to see if I can get it to get rust free. And then I left it. And don't you know, I found the leak, which is right here on the, whoops, right, right there. So I'll clean that up and I'll uh, put some uh, solder on it. That'll, that'll solve that. I'll put a little patch on there. It's right underneath the strap, eh? Or is that the top or the bottom? Who knows? That's the bottom of the tank right there. So it's right underneath the strap on the bottom of the tank. And you could tell there was a leak in it from over here. There was markings. Hopefully that's the only leak. And then I'll carry on cleaning the tank up. And then there's a few other spots. I banged at these with the hammer and they seem to be okay. And I'll clean it all up on the outside. Hopefully I'll be able to get it cleaned up on the inside. Then I'll see what happens. But now I just have to finish off putting away the generator out there because the power went off and then I leave the generator running after to get all the fuel out of the carburetor. So I just got to go and turn that off, turn the power off so next time it's got electricity to, and the battery to start it. And it's not a bad thing to run this thing every now and then because it should be run every now and then. So there. That was on for all of 20 minutes. That was the quickest power outage I ever did see around here. There you go. Anyhow, I'll carry on. Yeah, there was only a little tiny hole on there. So I put a bunch of tin. I cleaned it off, put some tinning fluid on here, or tinning paste. I'll show you that stuff. I, I got kind of ahead of myself there. It doesn't take long to do that. So this stuff here is lead-free tinning paste. I don't know, can you read that? Lead free tinning paste. And then just a little bit of uh, normal solder. And that's done. And that, like that's a good patch because it filled the hole and everything like that and I don't have to worry about it. I, I was thinking about putting another patch on top of it, but I won't. There's other places around here that I'll do a little bit more tinning, like right on here maybe and a couple other spots around that I saw some areas that are getting close to being rusted through. So I'll tin them up and then uh, I'll show you that as I do it. Yeah, so it was like what I thought. The, um, the way these pillar bolts are set up, I cut off the top in the car and then they just fell right out. But there's a, a nut in the middle of them and then, then threads on each end. So it threads into the car above and into the thing down below. So the car was letting go, but this one down below wasn't letting go, and it was twisting the whole thing, the whole, whatever, the strap around instead of coming undone. So I cut them off. I was able to find new ones online, and they will come out with the uh, impact wrench here without any trouble. Here we go. Whoops. Nothing ever works when you got the when you got the camera on it. 
Oh, I'll try again. I didn't have it in solid enough, eh? Here, take two. Give this another go. Yeah, there it is. That's all. So there you are. That's off, and that goes on like that, not like that. No straps, there's no trouble with those straps, they're in good shape. So now I'll just clean everything up and uh, I'll start doing some work with the uh, wire brush on it there and clean that up and see if there's any more leaks in it. Yeah, now there's the uh, <clears throat> area I did first, right? So I'm going to just do this little area right in here and just cover this. There's, excuse me, yep, had a cough there. Anyhow, there's an area in here that had some surface rust on it that looked pretty deep and there might be a little bit of a pinhole right there. So I'll cover this area with tinning and I'll show you how. Yeah, here we go. So now, I've got the camera on it. So I've got that tinning paste on there and you just smear it around. I just smear it around with my finger. I got my little bit of solder there. Where's my goddamn thing? Supposed to be self ignited, right? Anyway. Not too hot. It will heat up the whole area. And you get this stuff to just flow on it. My feet. So it's flowing all around everywhere I wanted to go except for where I wanted to be. Which is on that. So I might need some more tinning for it on that. I'll just do that. without burning my fingers off, right? I've got the suspected hole covered anyhow. That's hot. Now, I guess I might have to sand that off a bit more to get down to more metal, or I might have to just get a copper patch and put on that, which might be the way to go. I'll just get a piece of copper and pound it out flat and then I'll solder, solder it on there. That would be the right answer. Yeah, here I'm doing it right now. So I got a piece of copper and put it in here and it worked pretty good. So I'll just show you how I put the other piece of copper in. Heat it up and then I'll press it down into that solder that's already existing there. and it's floating pretty good on it. So I'll just give it a little bit of a water on this side of it. There, that should do it. Leave it alone for a bit.
then I'll just fix up the edges, edges here. I think that's in there pretty good now. And I won't dick with it anymore. So that just covers over that spot that was a little bit weak and uh, there was a little tiny hole right there. So I think I've got it covered now. I'll let that cool off and check it out. So I'll do that there, right? I did that there, that there. There, you know, all that English coming out, but a little spot on the side here that I'll do, and a couple of little spots around the edges. So I got lots of copper pieces for to do it with. I'm kind of running out of solder though, so I might have to go get more solder here soon. Yeah, there now, that's actually pretty good there. This one here, where the little hole was, that I know for sure was a leak. This one here, I'm not going to do anything with because I sanded it off and it looks like it's okay. There's a bunch of other little spots where I sanded them off and they're okay. It's just surface rust on the top of it. Like that spot there, I'm not going to do anything with. And there's one down here. I wonder where it is. Hmm. How do I find that? I have to sort of flip it up here. Oops. Hang on. More stuff in the way. Everything's always in the way. Like there's a spot there that I cleaned off well. Here we are. This spot here that I cleaned it off well and I and I can't it's good. I'm just gonna let that be because the more that I screw with stuff, the more I'm liable to screw it up. Anyhow, there we are. I'll clean it off a little bit more and uh then I'll Hit it with a coat of paint and make it look good. Yeah, there you go. It's looking, looking better now. I don't get at it too awful heavy on the grinding and cleaning for this kind of stuff because it's up out of the way and it's just, I just want it to be black and, and uh, not, the black paint will stop, stop it from rusting anymore. You can hardly tell where I fixed it there. You can't tell where I fixed it there. So I think it's a good, I think it's a good gas tank if I can get the inside of it cleaned out a bit. So inside it right now, and it's been since I started this, have got a just about a gallon of this stuff. Muddle Rescue Rust Remover Bath and Bain anti rule which is the French part. And then I just stuck it in there and let it. Let it soak for a while. I'm turning it over. I'll let it be right there for a while, then I'll turn it to another spot and see if that'll clean out some of the rust on the inside of it there. And then after I finish that bit, I'll steam it and then uh, see, how, see how it seems to be inside. I do have a new sensor thing coming and uh, I've got new pillar bolts coming for it too, so that's all right. Anyway, that's all for that. Yeah, here I am. So, I'm in the wheel well, or in where the gas tank lives. So down here, I got the light in one hand and this in the other hand. You can see that plate on top of the, uh, there's the framework down here. The frame's all good. It's very solid. But on top of it, they put a plate up there. This side here is not too bad. And... There's a little bit of a rust at the corner back there, and it's not too bad I can fix. But this side here is a little bit worse. So somehow i got to get in and fix that plate up in there. Now there's rust at the bottom of the wheel well. That's, I'll go outside here and show you. A little bang in my head and stuff. Maybe I'll even get, hang on, I'll get the light hang up there, hung up here. So you can see. What's going on? Upside down and backwards, everything. So this is the inner wheel well in here. There I am, right? That's the back quarter. 
that's the inner wheel well. Now I noticed that there was rust along here when I was working on it earlier, so I just ignored it for a while. And so what I think I'll do is I'll cut this out along, like just along that line right about there. And then, then I'll fix that bit on the top of the wheel well in there. On the top, this is the frame and that bed bits on top of the frame right there. And that'll give me a chance to fix up anything else in there too. So I'll just cut it out and see what see what's out there. Because this needs to be fixed. This needs to be addressed here anyhow. So there you have it. Now while I'm on the inspection tour underneath here, if I can get the light to get the light to cooperate a bit. Put it right on there. So this stuff here, that's a little bit yucky in there, so I should should do something about that. Then over here, that's a little bit weak in there. I'll just see what there is there. Maybe, it might not take too much to fix that, just cut a bit back here and a bit back here and just put a new piece in. I'll take a look up above and see what the floor pan looks like. Floor pan looks like up there. This side here, that little plate up there is, I think, not too bad, but we'll just see if there's any holes in the... And it seems that the inside inner fender on this side is okay. So I don't think I'll be cutting that apart. I think I'll just let that one be. Because it's only a little skinnier, like it's just a dust cover to keep yuck out of there. And it's got a couple of drain holes in in the frame so that the yuck comes out so i'm not going to worry about that side that other side though i have to worry about then right here there's a hole in my bucket right there so i'll cut that out and fix it this hose here goes somewhere otherwise i think we're we're not in too bad a shape underneath here i'll give you a little bit of a look here's that hole in my bucket right there then I can, oh yeah, there's another hole here, but that, that hole is supposed, it's intentional, they're supposed to be there. There's supposed to be three of them that are plugged with a rubber. Anyhow, but that's all right, and there's rubbers here for whatever reason. So, not, not too bad, like I'm not, that's not insurmountable, as usual. Make everything a small little problem and it goes away. But... Guess I got my work cut out here for me. There's the gas tank over there and the rear end. So those both are ready to go. I've got to clean up the uh, the link suspension stuff. Clean that up, putting the rubbers into it. But I'll do a little bit of cutting and pasting before I do that. The first cutting and pasting I'll do is cut out this and fix it. And then I'll cut out in the trunk the wheel spare wheel carrier fix that then we'll carry on from there and I got to figure out where I can likely put that lift over right on here next and then that'll that'll make it so I can fix up the metal on the outside here anyway oh well carry on anyway so it's quitting time today anyhow so I'll go to work on it again tomorrow on that stuff underneath there be a cut and paste guy tomorrow, I think. Yeah, here I am. It's what day is it? I wonder. Tuesday, maybe. Yeah, Tuesday. So, figure it's time to do a little bit of cleanup in here. I went out. It's sale day at uh, Princess's Auto, so went out and got that table. And you can actually, it's steel, so you can clamp stuff to it with a clamp, and then that makes things easier to cut sometimes. Then that means moving everything around. So I put the tool chest over there. This one here has still got the uh, wrenches and everything on this side. I guess, hmm, that's a ways to travel in between, but I think I'll get used to it. I've cleaned up in here. I haven't ever seen the floor right there for about a year and a half or as long as this, since I've been working on the beamer. And I've cleaned up along that edge. So now I have to clean up underneath there now. And then work my way down here. The grinder used to be sitting there, but I think I'll put it over right in here. 
there's not a bad spot for it right there underneath that shelf. And then all the uh, presses and stuff like that I can leave up around the front and I'll put my other little little uh, sawhorse right up there too because I use that sometimes for stuff. The other sawhorse I'll put back in the other shop until I need it. Then as I, I'll just work my way around and, and clean up as I go and get things a little bit better organized in here. I think that'll be the day for the day for today. I don't think we'll do anything on here. You never know. Might might get to it. Anyhow, that's the day today. We'll see how it goes. Yeah, Tony's in here to see if he approves of the new table or not. He's purring anyhow, so must mean it's good, right? Hmm, who knows? And he hasn't chewed on me yet. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's happy now. There you have it. Yeah, so power's been out here for about four or five hours now. And I've got the generator running and an extension cord coming in for the vacuum cleaner and one light. And I point at the ceiling so I can see. So what can you do when the power is all out? The only thing you can do when the power is all out is clean up the shop. So that's what I've been up to. I've been cleaning up the shop. I've got to pretty near here. A little bit past there on that side. So now next thing is to uh, actually clean out underneath the uh, the tool caddy. This thing here is the first time I've been cleaned that for a long, long time. Lots of dust, I'll tell you that. Anyhow, carry on. Oh yeah, there we are. Power came back on about midnight last night. So now, I think it's clean enough to get after it again. So, I cleaned up the front end of the shop reasonably well. That I suppose someday I'll get some water and clean up that stuff there. It's just a bit of a mess. And the back end of the shop is still in the same kind of shape it was, but it wasn't in too bad a shape anyhow. I've, I've got another metal breaker coming, I think. One that's a little bit better than this one. So this will likely get moved over to the other shop and I'll put the new one right here again. But we'll just see what happens if it ever gets here. Anyhow, there you go. I've got the uh, gas tank over there soaking or whatever. I'll just turn around. Every day I'll turn it up one way or another way. There we go. I'll carry on. Time to get after this stuff up here. I think I know where I'm starting. Yeah, you'd be happy to know one of these things showed up in the mail today. Or in the delivery guy's hands. So, there we have it. That's all the brake parts I need, as long as I don't break this one. And I just put a nice coat of red paint on it to go along with the other side. Yeah, here I am back at it again. So now, what I'll do is I'll cut out a chunk of it here. And then I'll be able to reach in from both sides and get to that top plate that's on top of the frame here. Get that cleaned up and right. Then maybe we'll carry on with the rest. But what I'll do is I'll get my uh, scaler out and I'll, I'll get all this junk out of here. That's first on, first on the list. There, that's mostly cleaned off here now. Like I said, whenever you see that tar stuff, there's usually a rust hole somewhere in there. So it's rusty along in here, and there's a little spot right here. And so I'll just, and this is rusty, so I'll just cut this. Now there's lots of complex curves on that. Hmm, I guess I'll get it figured out. Yeah, there I'm getting it. It's slow but, slow but sure. There's still a couple of spots where it's held on right here. And then I'll be able to peel that thing out of there, I hope. And I might have to get it around the back of that, this, uh, this bit here where the shock absorber, the shock absorber tower, I might have to get around the back of that. See if I can put a new piece of metal in there too. Anyway, it's a coming along. Yeah, I've got it mostly out now. But now if you look down in here, can you see down there? 
that's inside the frame and it's clean as a whistle in there and this piece here is all rusted to uh, well very very weak material but I guess that's what it's for was to uh, protect the frame so I'll see if I can get a new piece on here once I get the rest of that out huh. yep talking to nothing there it is the uh, I've got that cleaned up pretty good now, so I can go ahead and uh, build the uh, new piece. So I'll take, uh, I, I did save, I saved the old piece, oh, in very good shape. But I'll straighten this out, out and use it for a bit of a pattern, and then I'll be able to get started on the new piece. Anyway, I'll get at it. Yeah, so here's the model piece. And it's got a little bit of a crest in it there, like a, I don't know what the, what you call that thing, but it goes from here, there's supposed to be a hole there, <laughs> there's a big hole there, down to here where there's supposed to be another hole in there that lets air out. Anyhow, it's got that bit of a hoopy thing on it. So I put it into the thing here for making hoopy things, and I've got one, it's not a very big thing, so i got one side done right there. And I'll see if I can make the other side here. Hang on, I'll set up the camera and maybe you can watch this happen. There it is recording. So now I've got it set up in here. This is screwed down. That's a 1 8 inch, 1 8 inch uh, thing there. You've got choices of 1 8 and 1 quarter. I just screw it along. Follow that line, more or less. One end to the other. to it. Now I'll loosen it off and I'll turn it around so I get the end piece done. I think I can do that. Hang on. Let me just, it'll be boring for a minute here, but I'll get it set up. cut right across about there. Turn it upside down. Now, what's going to happen here? It's going to make it like that. I want it to make it the other way. So these have to be inverted to the other side to get the to get it right. So I'll just shut it off and I'll and I'll change them around. Here we go again. Now we've got it set up so that it's going to go the right way, I hope. But it'll only just take a little bit of a turn back and forth here to make that crease. Then I think I'm done. I'll take it out and I'll show it to you now. There. 
there. You can kind of see it's good on this side. It's like that. And then the top side is like that. So that that's what it looks like inside there. Now I'll cut a hole here and I'll cut a hole here because that's what it has in there. And then, that, then I'll start shaping that piece to make it fit inside there better. Anyway, that would be... Oh, what do you call this thing? I call it a bead breaker. No, not a bead breaker. A bead roller? I don't know what it's called. It's kind of a handy little tool though. Yeah, now here we are. I've got lots of pliers holding it here. So the it's got like a wave in it. It goes like this. Like that. And then it also has to have a lip hanging down here for this wall to attach to. Interesting. So what I'll do is while it's clamped on like that, I'll take a piece of, like a half inch piece of strip of metal and make it so that it fits to the inside of this and, and follows that curve. And uh, then I'll just spot weld it on a couple of spots and see, and I'll show you how it comes out. Yeah, there it is. Now I've got that welded on spot welded or touch what do you call that tack welded in a few spots let me get it out of here for a minute there i'll show you so that just along there so what i'll do now that is the top of it so that has to disappear that bit up at the top but it's got the not much of a curve to it but there's a bit of a curve to it that it's showing in there and then this thing here also goes on a curve. This one here is pretty flat, so I'll just put a piece of... Oops. This bit here is pretty flat, so I'll just put a piece of... Uh, piece of metal along right to there. For the lip. And then, uh, so what I'll do... On the inside here, I'll weld it all along on the inside. Then I'll cut off the top here, and then I'll run a bead along there and, and round it up. See how it works out. Yeah, there it is. Now, not a bad little bit of work there. It's got this hoopy thing in it up here. And then there's this bit that goes along here and then there's a lip that joins onto the uh, body panel of the car in the back seat. Or there isn't any back seat, but in behind the seat. So this part here looks pretty good. Now it's welded pretty heavy on the inside. I don't know, can you see that? Yeah, you can see that. And I didn't take those welds down too much there because that'll leave the strength in it there. So anyhow, that's not a bad piece. I'll see how it fits, maybe, hey? Eh? Yeah, there's where it goes. It's, it'll take a bit of, a little bit of work to get it to fit just right, but first sitting, it fits pretty good. It's got the curves on it and it's got the curves this way. Then this wall here comes down and meets that curve and this this thing here I left that here on purpose so I know where the curve went to kind of like that idea and that kind of sits right about there anyway that should do it we'll see how it works out I might have to do some grinding underneath here to get that to just sit down there in a few spots I'll work at that tomorrow that's the end of the day today got to let it down let the car down and put it on its overnight spot. Yeah, pretty good day. And we'll carry on again tomorrow. Have to go to town in the snow. Have to go to town first thing in the morning, and then there's a snowstorm coming in the afternoon. Oh, what do we do, eh? That's where it sits for the night. Okay, so we'll see you all again tomorrow. Yeah, here I'm back at it. So where have we been doing all day? Well, it snowed here last night, so we got the first real taste of winter around Holland Cove. So I had to have the tractor out this morning and cleaning snow up. It didn't, uh, I didn't movie any, it didn't film any of it because I just didn't. And then I got this thing, I picked this thing up at the store, a new 
metal bender. This one here, you can put metal in upside down and backwards and then make uh, complex shapes. And the other one, you could only do one shape. This one here, you can sort of do stuff like that if you need to, which sometimes I need to. Anyhow, there it is. That's uh, Now I'm ready to go with this piece here. I took, like I've got the indent on the top here. And then I cleaned up in here so that uh, it'll fit better onto the onto the car. Here I am pointing to the back, Whoa, that way to the car. And now I'll go and I'll find some where the beams are, and I'll drill holes in this so I can spot weld it on there. There you go. There it is. It's all holes drilled all the way along that uh, I can use for spot welding it on. And I guess it's ready to go on there. I'll give it a try. Yeah, so <laughs> questions from the viewers, right? So Roger wants to know, how is the damn thing heated in there? It's a nice cozy shop. And it's all insulated with spray foam all the way around. And then this, uh, there's a latex finish on the stuff above the wood. So late, the uh, spray foam, you have to have a half hour burn time between that and uh, and the insulation by code. So this this is half inch plywood, so it's got a half hour burn time. And then on the ceiling where there isn't any plywood, you have to put this uh, latex coating on it that is about a quarter inch thick, and it's got a half hour burn time before it gets through to the uh, underneath. And then this, there's a heat pump up here that uh, I had installed and it uh, keeps the place nice and warm. And then over here, that's uh, just an exhaust fan, high, high capacity exhaust fan. And then whenever I'm smoking in here, it uh, gets the air cleared out pretty quick. Yeah, so now I'm into the trunk and this is the spot where, where I was chewing at it from the inside in there. So. I'm going to cut out along here, up here, and across there. And that'll make it so I can get access in there to fix that top on this side. And I'll build the piece that goes around the, uh, hmm, around the tower. Yeah, there you go. I always cut out more than I think I'm going to cut out. But I can see in there well now. And that, that, uh, what do you call that? The frame there is clean as a whistle. That's really something that uh, that frame stands up so well, and <clears throat> the rest of it is rusted. Hmm. I don't know, but I guess that I'll I'll take it because if it was rusted frame, we'd be in trouble. Anyhow, I'll carry on. There's just a little bit of a mess around here. I got to clean up that. Like there was a spot weld there and a spot weld there. And another spot weld there. So I use this like a half inch drill to do those spot welds. And it works pretty good at getting them out of the way. And then I saved the piece. I wonder where I put it though. Oh yeah, there it is. Because it's got kind of a, there's some, some curves to it that I've got to replicate on the new piece. And I don't know if that's one piece, that's two pieces there. Hmm. We'll figure it out. Yeah, there, I got that all cleaned out pretty good and pretty well in there. Now I've got a couple, little bit more grinding to do up on that rail up there. But I'll start building this piece that goes around. So it's got to have a flat piece all the way to about here. And then it flanges up and catches the back of this. Then it's got to go around that thing, but I can just, I'll take the flat piece, I'll cut out a, a circle that'll go around that, and then I'll just put a uh, flange at the top. Then it's got to have a flange going down the bottom over here. So, cool. We'll get it. Yeah, so there's kind of the shape that I need right there. This circle there, or crescent. Now what I did was I just took a uh, piece of, uh, scrap metal 
and bent it around that on the outside and then scribed it on the inside of this. So it come pretty close and if it needs a little bit less or more I can adjust. Yeah, so now I'll just take a like a half inch piece of this and I'll weld it around the perimeter of this and that'll make the up flange. Now I gotta leave this thing full length because it seems to fit there pretty nice and then I'll get the other stuff welded onto it. It'll make a good base. Anyway, there you are. That's it for today. I've got uh, got to go and make some supper now. Kind of a short day, but we'll be doing. We'll get more tomorrow. Yeah, Friday, new day. I'll get this thing here done today. I hope. So this one here, I just have to weld it on to the. Where am I pointing? This piece. I have to weld on to here, and then that will go around the uh, the tower for the shock absorber in the back. This side here, the pat the driver side, it's the only side I have to do for this. The other side is reasonably good shape, so I'll give it a coat of black paint, and then right up in there, I don't know if you can see, there's a whoa, yeah, see there's a whoa, whoa what a big finger I have. There's a hole right up there that's in that area, so I'll cut it out of that and, uh, you know, fix that up. But otherwise, on the passenger side, it's, it's good. Now, I know it's backwards for you guys in England, so the passenger side's on the other side here. Or is that? The passenger side's on the wrong side or the right side? Who knows? It's on the right side, but maybe the right's wrong. There you go. Yeah, there it is. So I've just uh, tack welded it around the edge here. Now I'll go along and I'll weld it on. So you just curve that metal around and then you've got the... Let me see, I'll get this out of here. Oh yeah. Then you got the piece that you... It's got a flange going down and then a flange going up. And the rest of it just sits on the sits on the, uh, whatever you call that, sits on top of the frame. And then I'll, I'll drill some holes in here to uh, spot weld it. I'll drill some holes along there to spot weld it. And then this one here, what I'll do is I'll just take a cold chisel and sort of push it into the, uh, into the tower and then weld it along the top seam here just by just by uh, tack welding it. Anyhow, that's, that's that for now. I'll weld it up and I'll show you what I get done. Yeah, there it is. So I've drilled a bunch of holes in it and I think it's ready to go. I'll install it and see how it works out. Yeah, there it's, it's in. Ugly, ugly welding, but once this is closed in, nobody will ever see that again, and I'll paint it up black. So, that would be done in there, and then I'll, I'll make a piece now to fit around in here, right to there, perhaps. Hmm. Might be able to make a piece to go right in there. I'll see what I can do. Yeah, there's the bottom plate welded in there. And then I just have to put this wall plate on. I'll put a bit of a flange out this way, and that'll... Uh, Hook it on good. Anyway, I'll carry on. Yeah, there we go. I grinded it up so it looks a little bit better. Now, I'll see if I can make a piece to fill in this right here. See what happens. Yeah, there we go. That's welded in there again. And I checked around for pinholes and stuff and I couldn't find any, so I think we're good. Anyhow, that's uh, that bit in. So now I have to start working on the, I think I'll work on this bit in the front next. And then I'll do the sidewall. Yeah, there we go. I cut a piece of metal to fit in there. And actually, well, it goes like that. Now this side on here, uh, on the car, is that hoopy bit there that I made here. And... Uh, I bent it 
on the brake over there to fit this to make this kind of a shape here and then that will fit up against that shape fits up against the uh, this flange here and don't you know it does fit I don't know why but there's the other hoopy bit there I didn't cut that out of the car so I'd know where to start with it then the uh, the way I made that hoopy bit come back I just cut down the center and then pounded it out with uh, on the anvil so that it came together and I'll weld that up later and make it whoops I pounded it out on the anvil to make it come together and then I'll weld that together later to make it look good and yeah, maybe I'll weld that together right about now to make it look good because that'll be on the back side hey eh? hmm okay I'll do that yeah there you go that piece is in there and it's uh, it actually lines up with what's behind I don't know if you can see I, I guess I'm just lucky can't really see in there, can you? Wait, I'll get a light. I'll get the light. There, you can see there. See now that flange just lines right up with the uh, with that piece of bodywork there. Isn't that something? So I'll be able to spot weld that on with the holes that I've drilled, and then uh, then I'll get in and clean up inside here, paint everything in here, and then I'll close it in with the outside piece. Cool. There you go. Anyway, and it's Friday. Don't you know it's Friday? So, I hope you enjoyed everything here. It looks like uh, made some progress. Got a few things done. You can't really see it from out here, but I guess the gas tank's done. And uh, a couple of other little things. So, and then I got some new tools. Or new workbench and a new bender thing and that bender thing sure is nice compared to the old one anyway there we go and i'll see you next week i hope